Yeah, hi guys, uh, Ryan here. Uh, um, doing a DPF uh, swap out, uh, putting a new DPF filter in my truck here. Um, I've got it out, but uh, I just wanted to do a quick short video for people that aren't familiar with what a DPF is. Um, why I've got this unit outside the truck here. Um, to kind of to break it down so you can actually see when people say I got DPF problems or you know the dealer or whoever you're at the shop whatever they're saying all your DPS plugged up and all that um, I just want to take the chance now when I'm doing this um, with another part with another video series that I'm doing um, so that way you can kind of put eyes on what's what's actually the problem that you could be uh, having or what 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 this actually is uh, so I'll switch this around here in a second. I've already got this taken out of the truck and it's I've already taken it apart. Uh, you got three sections with this and the inlet side you got a catalyst right here and then the center is actually the DPF, the, the, the problem child right here and then you just have an outlet side and I'll, I'll flip this uh, camera around and all that and actually go through all this here in a second. Uh, you got a lot of sensors on here. There's an inlet temp sensor here on the catalyst. Uh, you got a you got an inlet temp on the DPF and an outlet temp on the DPF. And then there's a differential pressure sensor right here, which measures the difference in pressure from the inlet to the outlet, which basically tells the computer, the ECM, what the restriction is inside of this and tells you if it's full or not. And that kind of controls your regions and and those crazy shutdown lights and all that type of stuff. And the outlet, it's it's just an outlet. There's nothing there. Uh, so it's it's not real complicated. Uh, I mean, they're expensive. I mean, these sensors are over $100 a piece. Uh, this differential pressure sensor, I just replaced that. It was like $140. Um, they are available cheaper, the aftermarket ones on Amazon and stuff like that, or eBay, uh, or other online marketplaces you can get those down to forty fifty dollars uh like i said the temp sensors and stuff they're they're still like a hundred dollars a piece so i mean this whole array i just bought a new um this is actually made by cummins this is cummins emission solutions so it's technically a cummins part but it's an aftermarket replacement for this center section which is the filter um and i had it was like 1420 before tax and they got the door it was a little over 1500 to replace this center section uh, so I mean with all this I mean you're looking probably close to three thousand dollars to to do every if you want to do a whole new unit or something um, so they are pretty expensive and that's just parts and uh, no labor or anything but they're they are fairly simple I mean the clamps here you have two large clamps that that clamp these sections together and there's a gasket which this kit that I just bought, it actually came with the, the bigger gaskets that go in there and all that. And I just replaced these clamps not too long ago when I when I cleaned this last year, about 100,000 miles ago. Um, when, like this was a, a reman unit, and you you're after a reman, you're lucky to get um, you know 100, 125,000 LM if you're lucky. Um, before cleaning then after that I mean the life of that's only about 250 or so on the mileage uh, for a reman unit because um, mine's been kind of acting up so I just decided to buy a brand new unit and put it in and and hopefully I can that it get me through the life of the rest of this truck that I have uh, hopefully um, so I'm gonna go and switch this around real quick on the camera and tip these up and show you what this looks like inside so everybody can kind of understand what what people with these texts and whatnot are talking about uh, when they're explaining this stuff so you're not getting um you know the the wool pulled over your eyes or something so we're going to do that okay again so you got the catalyst section here which is the inlet there's a temp sensor then, like I said, you got a whole array of sensors here. You got an inlet temp on the uh, DPF, outside outlet temp, differential pressure sensor, and inlet side or before ash, and outlet side after ash on that. And it's not too complicated. This uh, we'll start with the back here. And there are you got two clamps. You got a big clamp that goes around this, and there's a gasket, and there's the same deal on this side. Um, the outlet 
not much to see there, just the steel outlet. And the DPF. See, that's all set it up. I haven't tried to sign a light or anything through it yet, but it's uh, it's reading pretty high on my um, on my Bosch tool and all that. So it's it's definitely plugged up and it's wanting to, to region quite a bit, <laughs> or I'm getting high differential pressure on it. So so here you can see you got that pressure sensor, temp sensor there, and on the other side. You got the same thing. You got the uh, pressure sensor here, temp sensor here. So it's relatively simple. Then uh, the catalyst. You got that honeycomb ceramic deal right there. Can't see the temp sensor. And you know, just an inlet. So. So I said that that's that's pretty much what a DPF is and uh, kind of what the sensors are and all that. Uh, I don't quote me. Uh, I believe when this whole thing's operating, I mean your inlet temp there, exhaust temp kind of on turbo, you need to be I think at five, about 570 degrees or so for it to initiate that that reaction catalyst there for that to start. Then to break down the carbon in the DPF here, I think it's 962 degrees or so for that reaction to happen within this unit to break down the carbon to clean it out. So, I mean, if you can watch those temperatures, that's roughly where you need to be. I mean, maybe a couple of degrees off as far as that goes. But from the outlet here on this particular truck with an SCR, that outlet will go up into the SCR and that's what injects the, there's a def injector and all that, and that's where it, it uh, that, that def gets hot and all that, and that's what burns off that nitrous oxide or NOx um, to reduce those levels. So, so that's pretty much uh, what a DPF is, and uh, just wanted, while I was doing this, just wanted to share that uh, as part of this little series we're doing on this, and uh, like I said I hope that helps you out, but uh, I'll go ahead and uh, call it a day on this. So, let me turn this around. Alright, so go ahead and uh, shut it down on this, but I uh, just wanted to uh, share that with you all. And, um, like I said, this little information there as far as what a DPF is and kind of what it does and uh, what it looks like and all that inside and what the you know sensors and stuff are. But um, just figured while we was doing this, we'd share that with you all. Um, like I said, we appreciate the views. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do that. Uh, yeah, hit the bell for the updates. Uh, give us a thumbs up uh, if you like the video and all that. Uh, like I said, we'll be putting this thing back together tomorrow in the second part of this other series we're doing, putting it back in the truck and all that. And um, if you guys are new, uh, we do the owner operated trucking stuff, Landstar stuff, truck maintenance. Uh, we're in the farming too, uh, working, always working on. We got tractors and stuff around here we're always working on and uh, as soon as it warms up here I mean it's January right now but here in the next couple of months we'll be getting back in the field again and uh, doing a little farm work and all that and be having some videos about all that stuff so I uh, hope you all enjoy it we'll see you all next time and again thanks for all the support and the views we'll see you all later